There's solutions at specific areas, right? So if x, for example, is 0, uh -huh. what would y be? Zero. Zero. If x is negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. If y is 1, two. twice 1 is 2. Now I've got several points to graph to make one. For those of you who remember mx plus b, even though we haven't gotten there officially, what would the y-intercept be? One. What's zero. there? Is there a one there? There's zero. a zero, so it'd be zero. And the slope would be two up two to one. one, right? Right. If you don't remember, that's okay. We're going to cover that today. So let me plot these points, and then I'm going to come back and show you why the slope and the intercept makes sense. So this says zero, zero. And then it says negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2. There's my line. So you can either make a table or line yourself up to 0. The slope says go up 2 over, over one. 1. Bam. Right? And it shouldn't be that surprising. I mean, just to kind of get into the next section a little bit, the number in front of the x, whatever the x does, in this specific case, y will do twice as much as that, right? So look at this. If the x goes down by negative 1, then down by 1, what should the y do? It should do twice as much. So it's going to go down by 2. If it goes up by 1, if the x goes up by 1, the y should do twice as much. It'll go up by 2, right? That's why it's not a surprise that the number in front of the x is the slope. Because whatever the x does, the y will do this many times as much, right? And of course, this being the y-intercept is no surprise either. How do you get the y-intercept? You let x equal 0. So whatever number is here is going to be the only thing left. Oh, don't worry. We'll get more into that when we get to the next section. What about part b? Y is constant. Yeah, there's no y, is there? So Not y is constant. X is constant, isn't it? Y is X must be negative 3. So, for example, uh, give me a point where x is negative 3. The x has got to be negative 3 here, right? Negative 3 over 1. Yeah, so it could be like negative 3, 1. Isn't the x negative 3 there? And where is that? Negative 3, 1 would be right there, right? See, I didn't understand how they got that. What's the only thing the equation says must happen? Oh, okay. X negative. must be negative 3. So what could y be? Any damn thing. So it's just a vertical line. This has a restriction on both, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's why it's diagonal. As x changes, then so does the y change. Do you see that? Here, x can't change. But does it say anything about y? No, y can do whatever the hell it wants to be. As long as if I make y 3, x has to be negative 3. If I make y negative 2, x has got to be minus 3. three. See, so you just get this vertical line. And think about it. If the x changes, I would move left or right, correct? Yeah. If the x here is 1, if I move over here, now the x is 2. So if the x cannot change, which direction can I not move? Right. Left or right. right? What's this line do? Goes up and down. Did you see that? Uh -huh. Elevator. So what about, I love it, elevator goes up, elevator goes down. <laughs> That's from uh, my childhood cartoon. Yeah. Um, old cartoon. Animaniacs. Animaniacs. Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Y equals 2. What do you think is true about that one then? Y is not allowed to change. So this cannot go up or down. It can only go horizontally. So it's going to be a horizontal line, of course, on Y equals 2. Every single point on there has the same. Oops, every single point on there has the same um, value. restriction value, right? It, they gotta have y two. What could x be? Whatever the hell it wants to be, because it doesn't say anything about it, right? So an x equals equation is a vertical line. Y equals equation is a straight. And think about it. This is getting a little ahead of us again, but if the slope is the thing in front of the x, mm -hmm. what must be in front of the x if it's not there? Zero. zero. And what would zero slope mean? Flat. Mm -hmm. Total sense. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So it means P and C is zero limit. 
It's kind of have a zero slope. Yeah. Zero, zero slope. So that's why y equals is a horizontal, horizontal line. Slope. X equals is a vertical slope. slope. No, infinite slope. Infinite? Infinite slope, yes. yes. Right? This goes crazy. So those are spe those are special cases. When one of the letters is missing, it's a special case. It won't be diagonal then because they're not changing with each other. It's just one or the other one is the only thing that's allowed to change. Can I just ask? All the time. Okay. Um, how you got the x and the y? Was, was that just arbitrary numbers you put in at Here. zero, negative one? Exactly. Right. Why are there an infinite number of answers possible for this equation? Because x can be anything it wants to be. y can't be 2 in a way, but y depends on x here, really. right? If I make x 1, then y has got to be 2, and so forth. right? But it's the relationship between the two. And we, we kind of intuitively know this. We do it all the time. If, if, uh, if I live 200 miles away from you, and you're going 60 miles an hour, can you make it there in a couple hours? going 60 mile an hour, can you make it to my 200 mile away house in a couple hours? No. Can somebody give me an idea about how long it would take? Give me an estimate. More than how many hours? Three. three. More than three, because three hours later it's 180 you've gone, right? You're doing slope right now. You really are. You're letting x equal something and seeing what y would be, right? If I'm going 60 mile an hour, a couple hours later x equals 2. What's y? 120. I haven't gone far enough yet, right? So if you want to see that visually, it would be, um, here's my house at 200. You're going 60 miles an hour. So an hour later, you've gone 60 miles. Two hours later, you've gone 120 miles. You guys see what I'm saying? So it's, it's just a different representation of stuff we already know. It's, it, believe it or not, this makes it easier to do a lot of other things. We do a lot of things already without ever having to graph it because that's all we need to do is that quick thing. But now we're able to do a lot more once we learn how these things work. Right? Okay. This is kind of cool because every time I teach this is different. So now I actually have a record of what the hell I said. <laughs> yeah. That y plus mx plus b or y equals mx plus b, that's, that's the formula, right? Yes, that's the main formula. It's more than that. But m that's is the main slope. Formula. M is slope. M is slope. So let's get into that. Let's talk about that. Because that's the next section here. Three. Section 3.3. Three. Yikes. Yeah. All right. So a couple quick examples just to kind of prove to you that that's got to be the slope. We'll start off with the funky one. This is kind of cool though. I really want you to see this. This being the y-intercept is kind of a no-brainer, really. Because again, how do you find the y-intercept? Set x to zero. So if x is zero, y's got to be one. So whatever number is there, isn't it automatically going to be the y-intercept? So B being the y-intercept should really be kind of like, well, duh. Right? Because if you make x zero, what's left? Whatever the hell b is. Right? So that is just kind of like, wow, it's amazing, Jeff. Good job. <laughs> but now look, I want you, I'm gonna help you out with some other problems here too. I don't want to put a two in there, because then I have this fraction left over. I don't want to try to graph a fraction if I don't have to. Three. What well, yeah, three is a smart number to put in there, right? Mm -hmm. Because if I put a three in there, two thirds times three plus one. Three's canceled, two plus one is three. Three. How we doing? And then if you wanted to, if you needed to, you could graph this. <coughs> I got zero, one, and I got three, three. Now look, how much did the x change? Three. So I ran three, right? If I go the x, it's running. Because that's me on the ground running, right? If I'm going up and down, I'm somehow rising or falling. So running is x. How much did it rise by? Two. Rows two, right? So what would the slope be? Just looking at the stupid points that I got out of this thing. Two, two. two over three. Rise over run, right? 
2 over 3, where's 2 thirds in the equation? It's the slope. In the right place? I mean, do you guys see? So of course that's the slope, because whatever the x does, the y is going to do 2 thirds as much. If the x goes up by 3, 2 thirds of 3 is 2, the y is going to go up by 2. Right? So I never want you guys to take anything at face value. Don't just say mx plus b. Sure, got it. No, no, it just makes sense. It's just the way it is. So of course that's what we teach you. Because that's the freaking way it is. <laughs> so what can you do now? Oh, sorry, Pat, what's up? I was going to say right there, you can start right before it says the y, um, on the y-intercept, you start at 1, you go up 2 and go over 3. Oh, even if you start, yeah, exactly. You start here, you can go up 2, over 3. That's where we're getting. Yeah. So now I don't have to make that xy table for a line, right? That's just too much extra work. So here is where we are now. Some of you guys probably remember doing this. So if I give you a problem like y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 3. How do you graph that? Where do you start? Y intercept. Three, uh, three. Y intercept is three. Three. Zero, 0,3. So you start there. You've got to start at a point on the graph. The slope are directions that if you start on the graph, it'll get you back to the graph. So it's sort of like you're in the woods, you wander off the path, and the slope says, no, dude, just go over this much, you'll be back on the path, right? Uh, and the slope here tells me to go down four, over five. over five, not back five. So it's negative four, down four, positive five, over five. So down four, one, two, three, four, over five, kabam, right? There's my line, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Are you counting zero as well as five you're going down? Yeah, it, that's a valid point. Right? I can't jump over, so it's go one, two, three, four. Right? And then over. So my look at that is right there. Right? So down four, over five. So the x intercept on that is. How could you figure yeah, out? Yeah, what would the x intercept be? You said y equal to zero, right? Yeah. Let's see, this looks ugly, but we can do this. How do you solve that? Negative 3 equals negative 4 fifths x. You what do you do to get rid of the negative 4 fifths? 5 fourths. Multiply by the reciprocal. Negative 5 fourths. Good. Negative 5 fourths. So I get x equals 15 fourths. Isn't that almost 4? 16 fourths would be 4. And look, where am I at? 